Hello everybody, we're back in the shop today working on this CJ3A again and uh, we're just going to do a quick uh, viewer request here and uh, I do get a lot of questions about uh, how to compress the shock to get the cotter pin in there um, a lot of guys are wondering how I do it so uh, um, I'm going to just show you quickly how I do it and the key is with this this tool I made here this is just started out as a piece of 4140 steel and I turned a couple diameters on it and put a slot in it and that's so the cotter pin can go through and um, it works a couple different ways on a uh, on a clamp I got and I'll show you that and I'll try and set up and uh, and show you what's what so this is um, part of a OTC kit <clears throat> uh, they call it the three-in-one service kit um, a lot of guys use it for taking u-joints out um, you can use it for uh, doing ball joint work stuff like that on layer vehicles but um, it's a handy clamp and you'll notice this will fit in this side for when we want to have it this way and I also have a diameter here and it'll fit over there also so um, it can work both ways on this tool the way I made it and um, I'm gonna get a washer on here and I've got that in epoxy primer and uh, that'll get painted when the chassis gets painted and uh, let me get this this we're gonna work on this side this time with that in there like that and uh, I'm going to be in the way of the camera trying to get it set up. Let me get it set up and, uh, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm just kind of freehanding it now. Um, you can see it, how it's set up. And we've got our tool that I made on there. And uh, you can't see it. The lighting isn't good enough. But as we turn this here, it's going to squeeze that... Um, that washer and the shock bushing back and then we can get a cotter pin in there so um, let me put the camera back on the on the tripod and I'll show you what's happening okay what we need to do like I was saying is compress that so we'll just take our wrench and we'll compress that enough so that the washer is beyond the hole we'll take our cotter pin and we'll slip it in there and then we'll let the pressure off and shocks could be kind of a pain um, they made special tools uh, back when for doing this and I had a couple of them but I didn't really like them uh, so I made this one and it's a lot easier so now our cotter pin is in there and uh, we'll bang it down and we'll, we'll spread it like it should be um, and that's how I get the top section done. Now I'm going to pick up the I'm going to pick up the lift and we'll do the bottom one, and I'll show you um, why I made this tool to go on both ends of the of the clamp here. Um, we've got the 11 inch brakes on this, so it's um, the brakes come down a lot further, and I can't put it on the same way as I did the top. So I got to flip it around, and um, I'm going to show you that next. Let me get the lift up in the air and uh, get some lighting on that, and I'll show you that next. Okay, now on the bottom, you see we have the tool the opposite direction, and we have our our little homemade piece right in here, and it registers nice, fits in the hole, it doesn't slop around or anything, and then we just tighten this up. Uh, I think you can see it; it's on the back of the actual shock mount there. We tighten that up, and uh, and that works out perfect for compressing that that washer in there. So, uh, the washers could be kind of a pain, so that's just a quick way to compress them. You know, you put the tool up there, you tighten it down a little bit, drop the, drop the cotter pin in there, and then release it. It's the fastest way I know of doing it, and it's the easiest way. Um, a lot of guys try and do it with pliers and stuff like that, and it, it's just a pain. So, uh, if you take a few minutes and make yourself a little tool like that, it'd be a hell of a lot easier to uh, put those shocks in. So, uh... Just a little tip I thought I'd share with you, and I wanted to cover it for that uh, viewer that's been requesting I show it. So uh, there it is for you, and uh, 
We'll move on to a few more things. We're uh, assembling the uh, the chassis here to get it rolling pretty soon. And uh, I'll show you a few more things on that once we get these uh, shock washers in. Okay, I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're kind of jumping around today on a few different things. We're trying to, you know, get the chassis loaded up with everything. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to do viewer requests uh, as they come in and we just covered the shock washers and now we're going to cover the drag link um, this is the bell crank end and these are the parts that are going to go in there we got a we got a new old stock seal tested kit so we're going to use those parts because some of the originals were damaged and I get a lot of questions about this about this nut right here and um, guys, you know, wondering about what kind of screwdriver you put in there, and, and but um, you can buy. I think you can see this. You can buy a tool like this. And you can get these anywhere. You get them Napa. You get them off the Snap-on truck. I think uh, Craftsman makes them. Everybody makes these, and they're specifically for uh, things like this, such as drag link um, nuts, and it fits in there perfect. And you don't have to worry about doing it with a chisel or a screwdriver or anything like that. Let me make sure you can see that. You know, that just it's the perfect fit in there. And I've got a whole bunch of different sizes of them for different things. You know, on up to the big ones for big trucks. But um, this is the tool you want for for tightening and loosening the the, the nuts on on the drag link. So. Uh, let me see what this one is. This one came from Napa. I've had this one for years and years. And uh, like I say, you get them anywhere. They fit in there perfect. You're not going to screw up your your nut there. And uh, you know, it's just it's a good tool to have. Um, so we're going to get this set up uh, on this end, and uh, and then we'll do the uh, pitman arm end, and we'll get the new parts in there. Uh, here's some of the other pieces we got. Let me get you over there. And we've got pieces for the other end there, and then we've got our shields, and we got our seals there, and uh, we're going to put all that in. And we're going to put a little grease in there, and uh, get everything loaded up. Then we'll head over to the vehicle and uh, and put it on there. We've got our tie rods on. We uh, we've got new old stock tubes and ends for there. Um, uh, the customer found uh, new old stock ones. So they're brand spanking new, and once we get this in, we will have some steering. So uh, let me get this loaded up with the pieces. There's uh, there's no black magic about this. Just uh, <clears throat> take your parts out, and as you take them out, you put them in the same way. And this will capture your bell crank right in there. I think you can see that. And that's that end. And the other end, just as you take it apart, put the new, uh, put the new parts in as they come out. Uh, just keep your wits about you. Keep track of what's going on. Don't flip your whole drag link end for end. Um, keep track of what's going on. Keep it in the right orientation. Uh, put your parts in there and uh, put it back in the vehicle. All right, let me get this uh, loaded up real quick, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll get it in the vehicle, and um, I'll show you how to adjust it. Okay guys, there's not a whole lot of science to adjusting these or anything. You just don't want to over tighten them. You still want your your pitman arm moving freely, but no play back and forth. And basically, I like to screw the screw in until I could get the cotter pin through it easily. You know, just when you could <clears throat> when it's deep enough to get the cotter pin through, I go two more notches basically. Tighten it two more notches, send the pin through, and that's it. Um, if you go, if you keep it out too far and it's too loose, your cotter pin's not going through. And if you go too deep, um, you're just going to bind this up real tight. So, like I say, as soon as a, as soon as a pin will fit through there, I go two more um, grooves and put the put the um, cotter pin in, and that and that'll adjust it perfect. Um, now, if you remember. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know. Remember when we took this apart, we put a center punch mark there, and we're going to go do the same thing on the um, 
steering gear we got that center punch mark and we're gonna line those up and if you didn't do that and you're starting with new parts or something you want to make sure your steering gear is centered and then you want to make sure your pitman arm is is vertical um, so that you get full range of steering um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's in there I'm gonna go stick this in the vehicle and uh, show you what it looks like and you got to be pre pretty close on your pitman arm uh, if you're off, you know, a few teeth either way, you're not going to get full steering. So um, I'll go put this in and I'll give you a shot of it with the wheel straight ahead so you know basically where what position the pitman arm needs to be in if you're starting with a new one. Okay guys, there's the drag link in place. And we tested and made sure we're getting lock to lock on our steering, which we are and uh, we didn't change the pitman arm and I think let me try and get you in here there's our dot there and right in there you could see the other center parts so we know that's in the right place now if you're starting with a new pitman arm let me try and give you a shot of what it should look like the bolt should line up with the ball on the end in a vertical position as you can see there and when you're first putting it on, if you're using new parts, a new, uh, new steering sector shaft or something like that, um, put the pitman arm lo on loosely and uh, turn your, your steering box, you know, all the way left and right. Make sure you're hitting your stops on the axle. And um, <clears throat> I see a lot of guys and a lot of vehicles come in and they got the pitman arm in the wrong position and they're, and they're wondering why they only, you know, turn in good in one direction. Um, You've got to get that in the right spot to get your uh, steering even both ways. So we got that right. Now we're going to go after this nut right now and we're going to put that pitman, on, pitman arm on for good. And I like to take a little bit of uh, red Loctite and that's the permanent stuff um, and put it on there. That's the last thing you want uh, getting loose on you. So I'm going to go over and get some Loctite, I'm going to put this nut on, and that will be our steering system uh, basically finished. So um, that's where we're at. I'm going to get everything uh, buttoned up here and, uh, and come back with you. Okay, we're finally at the point where we're going to get some lube in that steering box. And uh, I've been getting a million questions on uh, the lube for that. and. Uh, I'm going to go over it a little bit with you today. Uh, the thing you don't want to do is put regular chassis grease in there. Um, that's going to get in your tube, you know, your tube and worm gear there. That's your main steering shaft. And um, when that turns the sector shaft, the little nubs on the sector shaft, what they're going to do is just push the grease out of the way. So the worst possible lube you can put in your steering box is chassis grease. It's going to track out of the way and completely leave the area that you want lubricated um, and I've been working with this lubrication company and we've developed a very nice steering box lube um, I just got this old can that I use and it's a <clears throat> it's a heavy liquid I think you can see it going in there um, if we were if we were to put a um, a label on this basically uh, we designed this lube to, to, to work for uh, the, worm, the worm gear that's in there. So this is very specific worm gear lubricant. And basically, um, it's for, we developed it for the steering gears. And like I say, if we had to put a label on it, the, um, the ISO number would be, um, the weight of it would be about 1,000. So this is about 1,000 weight if you could kind of compare that to what you normally buy, you know, your 80-90 gear lube. Um, the ISO determines this to be a, a thousand weight. <clears throat> and ISO is just the uh, International Standards Organization and, and they, um, they put values on just about everything. So, we're going to just pump this in here. Now we're going to be in a constant bath of oil. Uh, it's not going to track out of the way like grease. Uh, there's no extreme pressure additives, there's no um, 
sulfurized um, particles in there that are going to ruin anything that's in that um, steering box. So uh, it took us a while to get it out and it's finally available and I, I have it available for sale if anybody needs it. And um, we're just going to pump it in here and uh, I'm going to go over to the bench in a little bit and show you uh, the, how it acts on the um, on the worm gear. Um, so I think you get the idea. It's uh, it's it's the correct lube for your steering box, and this will operate in temperatures from um, oh, right about 30 degrees below zero, you know, to well over uh, 200 degrees. So it's a very good um, all season lubricant. I know the guys wouldn't want to be changing the lube out of the steering box, so we made it um, uh, be an all-season type lube. I can't do that on some other lubes that we're making, like the transmission and transfer case and the and the knuckle lube. But um, uh, we we hit it real close on this steering gear lube, and um, I think you get the idea. Uh, like I say, it's uh, that's super heavy oil. And uh, I'm going to take you over to the bench now and give you a little demonstration of, uh, of how it acts on the, uh, on the worm gear. Okay, before we head over to the bench, I just want to show you. Um, basically, you're going to fill it up until it's even with the bottom of your hole here. So the lube is right, it's right there. You can see it. And I dunk, I dunk it right in. Okay? And that's going to be, basically when a vehicle's sitting, that's going to be level. It's going to hit your upper bearings. Your bottom bearings are always saturated in it. It's in through your tube here, and it's lubricating your, your bushings that are in there. And it's completely encapsulating the worm gear. Okay, and when you, when you turn your wheel, it's not going to track and move out of the way. It's going to be basically an oil bath that that's running in. And that's what steering gears need. And uh, when you have the right lube in there, um, the, the steering gear will last, you know, basically, it seems like forever, you know. When, when I put these lubes in them, um, and I've got restorations with this lube in there, and they're, uh, you know, I've got 20 years on some, and you, you look at them, and you, and you take them apart, and they're like brand new in there. So I've been tracking um, lubricants for the steering gears for quite some time. You put this in there and uh, it'll be the last lube that you need in there. Um, very high quality stuff um, and like I say we, we took a long time and we developed it just for steering gears and it's not the kind of thing that you're gonna go out there and find you know at Amazon or on eBay or something like that you know it's uh, uh, it's just not out there we took the time to make it and um, like I say if you need it just uh, Send me a comment or something. Let me know you need some, and we'll get you hooked up with some. Um, now we're going to head over to the bench, and I'll show you a few things about it. Okay, guys, I'm just going to show you a little bit how this uh, uh, really sticks to the to the worm gear. I'm just going to put a rag down here. And basically, your whole gear is encapsulated in this stuff. Okay, it's running in there. And that's going to stick on the gear. You know, that's not going to run off like, you know, a thinner weight oil or something. And basically when, you're, when your little nub on your sector shaft is running through there, if there was grease in there, that grease would move to either side. It would just, it would track right out of the way. Um, but now, <clears throat> the way we've got that box filled, that's completely encapsulated in that lube. Um, and like I say, you can see it's not hardly dripping off. It's, uh, like I say, it's, a, it's about a uh, ISO 1000 weight. And um, even, when we, even when we wipe it off, you know, we'll just run a rag around there. You can still feel a film of it on there. So, um, like I say, uh, I don't know how to explain it any better. It's, it's designed specifically for worm applications, and it's designed for older steering gears. 
and when this is on an angle in your box that whole entire box this is this is just drenched in that oil it's going to hit your upper bearings it's going to hit your lower bearings and it's always going to be spinning in lubrication so uh, as far as your your tube and worm here wearing out it just won't happen your sector shaft it won't be wearing out like if you had grease in there or some lesser oil um, like I say it's, it's just gonna hang around for a long time and like I say it's uh, it's available and uh, send me a comment if you need some and um, that's about it for now in a steering lube I'm gonna get to the transmission and transfer case lube probably in the next video uh, I'm gonna show you what that looks like and again that's um, developed specifically for uh, for older transmissions and um, I'm going to show you what that looks like on the next video. So I think we'll end this video here. And um, if you have any questions or anything, send me a comment. If you liked the video, hit the like button or subscribe. Or uh, let me know if there's anything you li uh, like to see. Um, in this video, we tried to, to hit on a lot of viewer requests. And I think we pretty much covered them all. But uh, again, that's what keeps the channel going. So... Uh, trying to make it better all the time so if there's something you want to see or something you need just give me a comment okay I will catch you on the next video thanks for watching